Yeah, no question about it. And uh, Nick, let's get the latest on it too, because I, I know we've got some uh, some updates coming in from the National Hurricane Center, right? Yeah, we've got Brian Norcross, Fox Weather's hurricane expert, live with us here in studio. And Brian, I was reading something earlier today from the National Hurricane Center saying that on average, from the very last issue that they update up until landfall, the National Hurricane Center can be off by as much as 60 miles in terms of where exactly the landfall is going to be. And that is a big thing. I mean, that could be a huge player in where Milton Lent makes landfall, especially for a place like Tampa Bay. Yeah, because the little bit south of Tampa Bay changes the dynamics completely in terms of which direction the wind is blowing. It doesn't stop storm surge from occurring in Tampa Bay, but it means that the, uh, the uh, wind is not necessarily coming from the west directly into the bay. It can be coming from the south and driving water up into old Tampa Bay or Hillsborough Bay, all the different parts of the very complex Tampa Bay area. You were showing the picture there from Anna Maria Island uh, that is uh, kind of south, just south of Tampa. Off uh, Bradenton, you can already see the winds there, tropical storm force winds right at the coast now gusting up to 51 at last report at St. Petersburg. So it is uh, beginning on the west coast of the state and not to mention the bands producing tornadoes already. Here's the update from the Hurricane Center as of 1 p.m., 145 mile an hour hurricane pressure estimated at 935. And look at the wiggles and wobbles, and this is why I was stressing, I don't want anybody in Tampa Bay to think uh, anything about what they're hearing on social media. Oh, it's coming in, it's, it's not gonna hit us, it's gonna hit Sarasota, it's gonna hit, no, 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 this is coming very close to Tampa Bay. And every time we see a little bend of the north here, here, and now another little bend of the north, you can see that's the direction it's heading. The only question is when it makes the turn, where does it make the turn? We don't know that exactly. Uh, somewhere between Tampa Bay and Sarasota, I would say. But there is nobody should be breathing any size of relief in the Tampa Bay metropolitan area uh, at this point. All right, let's look at it close up and see what's going on with the storm. Well, here you can see, look, this is all dry air out here. That's the boundary. And the upper level winds are pushing like crazy on this thing. And that's why it's slowly starting to unravel. What does that mean? It means the top wind speeds are going to come down, but it means the storm is going to spread out. A more spread out storm pushes more water toward the coast, more storm surge uh, farther south. You can kind of make that out here as the storm kind of has that kind of look about it there. But uh, the, that process that the Hurricane Center has been forecasting is indeed happening. When we look at the radar, now remember the radar is coming from the land, so we can't see the whole storm, but we're starting to see that, that we're getting a half an eye wall, and that's what we expect to happen moving forward exactly uh, because you can see the dry air coming in on this side here but this will be fierce uh, up here and this is going to be to the north and northeast north and northeast of wherever the center is so this is not a typical hurricane where everything is to the right of the center in this case the the strongest eye wall is going to be north and northeast of where the center comes in and if it comes in south of tampa that will be right over top of uh, Tampa, St. Petersburg, and uh, Clearwater. So uh, a lot to go here. All right, here's this, uh, and then we have these bands, right? And the way the bands work, we had a band here producing tornadoes, uh, thankfully just inland of the populated areas on the east coast of Florida. This band, though, is uh, producing tornadoes over the populated areas on the west coast, and then another band, and another band, and another band. And each band that comes in gets stronger nominally. I mean, forgetting the tornadoes. The tornadoes have been extremely uh, strong in these purple ones, especially particularly dangerous. Looking close up, let's see where this one is. This one is just inland. Uh, this is St. Lucie County. Uh, anything west of I-95 is generally unpopulated. And over here, we're uh, east of Charlotte Harbor, and uh, again, once we get west of I-75, we don't have too many people there, but we do have towns in there for under these bands. So everybody, uh, I hope they're taking cover and being very aware, having uh, some way of being notified, your Fox Weather app, keeping you notified, because this is going to continue through the day today. So this is phase one here 
with these bands and tornadoes, and then we get into uh, the phase two, which is going to happen tonight uh, with the arrival of the center. So remember that the cone talks about the center's arrival, nothing about the bands, nothing about the severe weather, nothing about the dangerous conditions outside of the cone, only where the center of circulation is going to track. So here we are, this is nominally 8 p.m. Eastern time offshore, somewhere between the Tampa Bay area and down to about uh, Englewood or so to the south for the center. The odds are it will stay in that area. Exactly where? We're not sure. As a matter of fact, when we look at the computer forecast models, they are clustered on the north side. Here is the European from earlier right into the mouth of Tampa Bay. Again, this is why I'm saying that nobody in that area should be uh, breathing any size of relief uh, at this point. I'm, it's not to say that the center isn't going to go farther away. It's, it's to say that right now, uh, the focus is on that entire region. And remember, everywhere, let's say it goes there, what's going to happen? In Tampa Bay, you're going to get surge going this way. And then as it exits, you're going to get surge going the other way. So a lot will go on in Tampa Bay. But down to the south here in Sarasota, Bradenton, on down to Venice and uh, toward Englewood, this is where the onshore uh, flow is going to come, and we're very fearful that the water will go over the barrier islands, into the inlets, into the harbors, well inland, up the rivers, lots and lots of dangerous areas in all those counties. That's what the evacuation zones are about. And we look at the uncertainty. I mean, generally, it's in the same corridor. Yes, there's a slight possibility north of the cone, a slight possibility down here, but the focus of the computer forecast has been on this this uh, corridor right here. So we're, we're just going to uh, keep focusing on that as the center. And remember, to the south of that is where the strongest winds onshore, most storm surge is. So here's a model depiction. Hurricane Center says hurricane force winds in that area about midnight, maybe a little after uh, landfall at that point. And here you see the winds coming in on the south side uh, in Tampa Bay, notice pushing water up into old Tampa Bay, East Pinellas at that time, if it makes landfall right in that area there. Looking at the wide view, look how much of the state of Florida, even up into Georgia, under tropical storm warnings. Down here in southeast Florida, this is where we're going to have these bands, in the, where you see the winds coming in like this. We're going to have bands there. And the reason all this is happening is we have these bands here like this, the flow coming in. But remember, in terms of the tornadoes, remember what I was talking about with those strong upper level winds pushing the dry air in? Well, they're pushing the dry air in this way. So in the upper atmosphere, the wind is coming one way. In the lower atmosphere, it's going the other way. That causes tornadoes to spin up. And this is a kind of an extreme version of that for a tropical system. Uh, we normally don't have east to west moving tropical systems uh, that, that have that extreme uh, difference in wind directions uh, uh, below and aloft in the atmosphere. Here we are at 10 o'clock in the morning, uh, hurricane force winds uh, on the Space Coast, extending north up to Daytona, maybe as far south as Vero or uh, Fort Pierce, tropical storm force winds uh, all the way up into South Carolina. That's why we have the various warnings and watches up that way. And then moving out, but continuing with the northeast flow into the northern part of Florida up into Georgia. And so that's going to keep the storm surge coming even as the storm moves by. And then by later on Thursday or Thursday night, it will all uh, let up. So there's the corridor for the worst of the rain. The strongest was, remember, that northern eye wall thing uh, coming across Orlando uh, into the all the way across the state as if the storm tracks here, we have that northern eye wall phenomenon, and we have a front up in here. It's all going to come together in this corridor, and that's why National Weather Service says that uh, extreme flash flooding, possible tornadoes, in fact, tornadoes look likely, and uh, very strong winds, damaging winds, a, uh, a corridor of damage across the state. Not that it's nothing farther and south, uh, farther north and south, but that I-4 corridor looks like uh, the heart of it. So let's just uh, check it out one time here to 
uh, go over again for the two parts of the state, draw a line across the middle of the state, down to the south, you have these bands that we're seeing now. To the north, you have more solid rain and embedded uh, cells. So watch as we go through, through the evening hours and it moves across the state. And you see that band up there, because of the front that's up there, it's bumping into while these bands down to the south uh, move across Florida and even into the Bahamas. So guys, different phenomena in different parts of the state. But this west to east moving storm uh, is creating the severe weather potential that, that is unusual that we don't normally see on Florida hurricanes. Usually you see this when storms are moving uh, south to north uh, across the southeast U.S., uh, for example. But uh, because of the geometry of this, uh, I think the, the tornado issue, if it ends up happening in, in populated areas, that's going to be a legacy of this along with everything else.